No man can ever save the feminine on its own. All men have to come together. A true feminine essence has been captured and imprisoned in this realm, probably for eons of time, for indescribable amounts of time, even beyond the concept of time. She has been imprisoned, captured and imprisoned in this realm and used as a battery because the feminine principle is the principle of creation she is creational power she has the power of manifestation she is raw power So she has been imprisoned and her power used to fuel all sorts of malefic, nonsensical realities. Because the property of this power and why it is so powerful and without this property it would never be able to manifest the entirety of life is that this feminine power is the essence, the essence of neutrality. She is pure neutrality. She is the virgin water always. She can never have a preference, never. She is the essence of virginity, of purity. The most pure water possible. She never takes sides. She never is biased. But this property, see, this property of pure neutrality, which gives it, gives it its immense power because it is only when you are able to be nothing that you then crea can create anything only nothing can be everything and anything more or less than nothing cannot be anything that's the paradox only nothing is everything And any form of something is an illusion, which has no power to sustain itself in existence. And this is why the force that has this world imprisoned is using this virginity, is using this raw power of life to manifest its visions. And she, this feminine force is currently imprisoned. She is imprisoned in everything that we do, everything that we see, every physical manifestation that we see is the torture of this feminine being. She is imprisoned in everything we touch, everything we hear, everything we sense, see, taste, and interact with. This is a world of torture and we are current, constantly torturing her, constantly. With everything we do, every word we say, everything we th think, 
until we purify ourselves, until we return in ourselves to the original vision of spirit. And we start interacting with the matter around us through spirit. It is only when we start being spirit that finally we lessen the torture which is done second by second, day by day, upon this feminine force by this reality. Because most of the people from this reality, they interact with the, the matter, the mother, let's say, the, this feminine force, from an impure mind. That's an impure imposter spirit. The mind is an imposter. It's an imposter spirit. And 99.9999 nine 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 percent of people they interact with this feminine force from the mind of the imposter from the imposter spirit which as described the imposter spirit is a phantom of sorts which has no is a disembodied spirit which has no power on its own to create anything and it has to use the power of something else to manifest its visions. In another work that I've presented, which is called The Masculine and the Feminine First Outlines, I've described how there are four main aspects of our being, which is the mature masculine, which is akin to spirit, the mature feminine, which is akin to the primordial soul, then you have the immature feminine, which is akin to the impure soul, and then you have the immature masculine, which is akin to the mind. This imposter spirit is the essence of the immature masculine. The imposter spirit is the essence of, it's, it is the immature masculine, which is impersonating the mature, it tries to impersonate the mature masculine in order to control this true feminine force and the thing as i said is like she has no power to refuse the influence of the immature masculine she has no power in a way to refuse the visions of the devil because if she would have a preference exactly as i said she would stop being true life she would stop being she would lose her power, basically. She would stop being able to be what she is if she would have a preference. And this is, this is the paradox that she is being imprisoned in. She suffers each day. Torture each day. Unimaginable torture each day. But she cannot 
still have a preference because what keeps her enduring all of this stuff is her true love towards the true masculine. They, the true masculine and the true feminine, have a sacred relationship between them. If she would have a preference, she would lose her virginity. She would lose her ability to ever be able to create again. And she is always, to, to the cost of her life, she is always keeping her virginity for the true masculine. Because she knows he needs the power. She knows he needs to have true, genuine, raw power by his side. So whenever the true masculine wakes up, the true spirit wakes up, she has to be there in her virginity, never losing anything of her true power, because everything has to be put in his hand. This is the, the true essence of the virgin saving herself for the true groom. If she would have rejected anything of the devil, she would have needed to have a preference, but paradoxically that would have gave, that would have stripped her away of this purity. And she has decided to keep her purity entirely because that's her form of love towards him, the mature masculine. And this impersonating spirit, what it has done and it's doing day by day, second by second. It's to try to impersonate the most mature masculine and I can't even describe to you the torture she has to go through every single day. Every single day this immature masculine impersonates him, the mature masculine, and goes to her trying to convince her in a way that he, the little, impure, immature spirit, the imposter spirit, is the true spirit. I can't tell you how he, the imposter spirit, has been perfecting, copying the traits of the mature true spirit to almost like perfection. The impersonation, the trickery has been brought to a level of art. He is able to impersonate the true spirit so well and then he drives even more pleasure to go to her in this really well-made character, well-made impersonation where, where he is able to imitate the true spirit so well that she, in those moments, when he meets with this high-quality imitation, let's say, her hopes, man, her hopes rise up because she knows him. She always knows the true masculine in her heart. She always waits for him. She has been waiting for him since forever, in a way. Here in this realm where she has been caught since forever. She knows him in her heart. It is only one single key that can open the door to the kingdom within, which is her heart. Only one key. And only one signature can open her heart. And she waits day by day for that opening to happen. She wants to die. She just wants to die. She wants to die for this realm of death, I mean, where she has been encaptured in since forever. She just wants to die and paradoxically she knows that the only one which is able to help her die is the true spirit. He is the only one which can at the same time, kill her and bring her back to life. Kill her for this world of death, of course. 
she has to die for this word of death. Nothing of her, not even one single drop of that virgin water needs to remain in this realm. Everything has to be taken away from this realm. Every single drop of this virginity has to be woken up. So she has to die for the word of death completely. And he's there to kill her. Like the mature masculine, this is what it's here for. To kill, in a way, everything which is impure and false about her. Because she has been convinced. She has been convinced to take up all these impure roles and play like the prostitute of the devil for eons of time. So it is only one single signature, one single key that can truly deliver her to her true life. Out of this entire death realm, help her die for this death realm and thus allow her to be birthed for the true kingdom, for the true living life which she originated in. She is a true being which originates in the so-called heaven. She's part of heaven. She's a true being. But she was captured in this realm of death and recycled perpetually. A.G. Energy can never be created nor destroyed, only transformed. This is what happened to her when the second principle of thermodynamics speaks about this it speaks about directly about this virgin water about the feminine it's depicting directly what happens to her she can never die she can never be created because she always exists but this is the curse in a way of immortality this is a curse of eternity in a way because if you if you happen to be caught up in a evil creation and you're neutral and you're eternal at the same time you can never escape that for eternity you're always entrapped for eternity in that evil creation or that evil thing so much so when you don't have the power to choose because you are neutrality itself you are the virgin itself and if you would choose, because that's the riddle of the devil, this is the wickedness that he knew and played upon her. He knew that if she would have the slightest choice, she would lose her virginity. She knew, he knew, he knew that was checkmate for her in a way. She couldn't move anymore. She, could, she had no more ability to do anything. But this is only because she loved the true masculine. Because right now, in this very second, she could decide to have a preference. And if she has a preference, I can tell you, the entirety of the world is instantly destroyed. She has the power to destroy everything in a... In a blink or even less she has the power to vanish all not only this world but all the words of the devil everything in hell she has the power to vanish it instantly but that again is the trap she's trapped in because if she would have a preference she would lose her virginity she would stop being complete neutrality and she would lose her power in a way she would not have the same amount of power later she would have been stained, in a way, with judgment. She would have been stained with the preference, which is completely gross. I can tell you that. It's, it's, it's the, the worst thing that you want to have, to have a judgment or a bias. It's like, that is like throwing up. Only when I think about it, it would have remained as a stain on her forever. 
So she decided to endure all this torture and keep her virginity instead. Because she wanted, when the true masculine comes, she wanted for him to have the entirety of her, the entirety of the power, the entirety of the purity, without any stain to that purity. This is her form of love towards him. This is her form of love. So what the imposter has been doing is that in order to drive, in a way, much more of her power to stimulate, like an orgasmic stimulation, which is doing, he is doing the imposter every day to her, is like a masturbation of her powers. In order to drive even more of her, of her essence. And so he could, the imposter of course, extract this essence and use it for creating its mad manifestations with. She has the devil, the day by day, this imposter spirit is impersonating, as I said. And it has been taken, this impersonation, to the form of the ultimate art form, to impersonate the true spirit and then going to her, you know, like, like he would be, the imposter would be her true groom. And he has been impersonating him, the true spirit, so well, the imposter, that now the imposter goes through to her in this impersonating way sounding like him, looking like him, behaving like him, touching her like him. And she, again, because neutrality, is fooled day by day. She has her hopes rising up each day that, oh my God, man, it's you. You're here, you know. It's like, you, you've came, you've managed, you've, you're here. And she's like, when he, she meets him, she's the pure heart, man. She's the pure heart is re really immediately open to, really immediately ready to open up to spirit, the true spirit, the authentic one. And when she feels a bit like, he's like, you, you're here. And her heart, without her even wanting, because again, neutrality, starts to open up in front of him, in front of what she believes it's him, you know. And this is how her essence is again extracted. And again, she sees like, oh, it wasn't him. I was fooled once again. And she goes and she sinks into even deeper, even deeper unimaginable dark pits. She spirals into unimaginable falls from heaven. No one can even comprehend what she, the, the, the fall that she's falling each and every single day. Even deeper going into a pit which nobody can even comprehend. Doubting her, considering herself, blaming herself like, oh my God, I've how how could I have how could I have mistaken my true lover for this one again? I was again the full one. I was again how how full can I be to mistaken my true lover? And she sinks even deeper into unworthiness, even deeper into self blame, even deeper into self harm. And she this is how she remains caught. Because she always blames herself, in a way. And this is again a trick of the devil, which has convinced her that she has to blame herself with all these scenarios that he has been playing up on her since forever, as I said. He, the devil, the imposter, has become so skilled at this. He has convinced her that she's the worst of the worst. This is why, right now, 
she doesn't even feel herself worthy anymore to even meet the true spirit again. She feels us so unworthy of being met by the true spirit that she tries to hide. She, she right now, she thinks of herself like being the devil. The devil has convinced her after all these, let's say, impure intercourses. Yeah, we have to say it exactly as it is. These impure, all those simulated intercourses that the devil is having with her all day long. As I said, she became the prostitute of the devil, being raped all day long, producing all these impure abominations of ch children, abomination of creations, which of course they are fake, like they never happened, but for her, she, for her, they happened. That's it. She lived everything as if it had been true, because this is what I'm saying. This She is the power of manifestation. She has to live everything as if it would be real in order to give life to that thing. She has to live it. The nothing has to become everything. She is the nothing. But in order for anything to arise, she has to be that. She has to live that as if it is 100% real. So all the scenarios of the devil, all these impersonations, all these rapes, have been producing all these abominations of realities only because she had to live them as if they are true and real, even though they were fake and even though they were illusions, for her they, they were 100% real. Otherwise she couldn't have been given birth to them and if she wouldn't have been given birth to them again, she would have had to have a preference to say no. But if again the checkmate upon her was that if she said no, she would have lost part of her true power and true neutrality. So the paradox is that she decided to keep her power intact and virginity intact, but at the same time she lived all this <laughs> uncountable amount of scenarios where she was raped in unimaginable ways and produced with the devil uncountable children. Although they never happened because again the devil is not the true spirit, which the visions of the devil have never true essence behind them. So in a way they never happened, but unfortunately for her, all of them happened. So in reality, they never happened in a way. In heaven, they never happened. But in her, within her, because he is in, within her, the devil is within her. It's a poison which exists within her. She, she ate the freaking poison apple, let's say. Everything that happened is just, we are inside of her. We are inside Eve, which has eaten the poisoned apple and she has dropped dead there near the tree. Never, nothing, nothing happened. Adam never ate the apple. Do you understand? Adam never ate the apple. Everything that happened after a Eve ate that piece of apple, the, that piece of poison, she dropped dead in the second, right there. And everything that happened was her falling into this coma, falling into this sleep and being, let's say, in person, from within herself being penetrated more and more by this wrong vision of this devil, which took hold of her in her coma and the devil started impersonating all the other scenarios that happened after she bite the the uh, she she has bitten from the fruit. She dropped dead. She started living in a comatose type of dream, and everything that happened later with Adam coming also giving the apple to him, them being expelled out of heaven, everything 
was a dream. Nothing happened. The devil was impersonating Adam. The devil was impersonating God, banishing them from heaven and all of that stuff. The devil, the devil inside of her that existed inside of her from that moment on when she bite, when she bit on from, when she bite from that apple. I actually don't know the conjugation, the correct conjugation of the word. Everything that happened after that was just the devil impersonating everything and creating these wrong visions within her and already starting to use her as a fuel to create these wrong visions. And she was everything, she was creating all these dreams now in herself, within herself. God never banished her from heaven. Her true lover, let's say Adam, never ate the apple. Adam never turned against her and abandoned her and blamed her for eating the apple. Adam is right there in heaven next to her, trying, loving her exactly as it has always did trying to find a way to reach her within her dreams within her coma to wake her up adam never abandoned her god never expelled them out of heaven the heavenly father and the heavenly mother are crying for the, their daughter what type of father would ever be able to expel their children for making a mistake imagine that of course that's a freaking disturbed scenario created by the devil trying to convince her within her coma within her dream that her father has banished her from heaven and now her lover has turned against her and has abandoned her blaming her and now she's the only one ever blamed constantly for eons let's say cycles of time having to endure this original scene. It's just the devil whispering constantly in her head in this coma that she's in that keeps her continuously playing out inside of her all these nightmares and giving birth, giving birth to all these nightmares within her where she experiences herself as being the worst of the worst, the most unworthy, the most cursed, the most guilty, the most banished, the most raped, the most tortured for a mistake that she never actually even did. So the curse is that if she, in this comatose that she is in, in this hellish comatose that she is in, if she would stand against any of these nightmares, she would enforce that those nightmares are real and the devil has a true power. Do you understand what's at stake? If she would deny any of the visions of the devil, that would at the same time, the paradox is that denying any of the visions of the devil would mean for her to truly believe that those visions is truly real in the reality of heaven where she is now dead asleep. She would have to, if she would deny any of the visions of the devil, which now they are all these visions, the wrong visions of the devil, they are just playing out within her. These visions never escaped her into the reality. But she, if she would deny any of these visions, that the devil produces these nightmarish, disturbed, malefic visions that the devil produces within her, she would at the same time to deny that that vision, which she knows in a way she, it, they all are illusions. But if you'd start denying an illusion, the thing is that that means that illusion becomes real. That means you truly believe in that illusion. And that's when she would actually truly start to manifest the devil outside and she cannot she refuses with her life to do that she has been refusing this with her life she preferred to leave all these dark scenarios all these rapes all this torture within her but never allow any of these scenarios to escape her in the true heaven 
if she would have allowed and even one if she would have stood against even one of these illusions that was happening within her and refusing to manifest the illusions within her then that would have meant that she tr now believed that one of those illusions are real for real and then through her power those illusions would have manifested in the outside of herself in the heaven and she can she has decided that she will be her own prison she will become her own prison and never allow any of these disturbed disgusting things to escape from the world of her dreams and into the reality of heaven because this is this is the curse of power this is the curse when you are, have when you are the power of life you have to be really careful in a way To never manifest in heaven any, even one single drop of insanity or even one single wrong vision. So now she has had to become her own prison and to keep herself dead until Adam, let's say, spirit, which has always remained outside of this entire death realm, is, try, is able to reach her here in the inside. Somehow, I don't know how, he might be capable, that the true magnificent genius spirit might be capable of finding a way. I don't know how he might be capable of finding a way at some point and reach her here in this nightmarish of hellish, perpetual, eternal damnation that she has been entrapped in for cycles of time and somehow find her here. Because it's, she has to be met by spirit because spirit will finally come with her, to her, with a true vision. With a vision which is true, which is far from being an illusion. And finally when he comes to her here in hell with a true vision and she recognizes him to be the true spirit, the authentic one, the genuine one, not the myriad of impersonations. Finally she is able to like die like the heart opens in that moment in its entirety her heart opens in that moment in its entirety and she can just pour all that thing that she has been saving all the purity all the power everything in that one single grain of true vision and she is like that last breath in this world of death giving all the power to that one single grain of truth and this is how everything is flipped that like this is how that one single grain of truth gains all the power of life itself and gets instantly blasted off into a heavenly manifestation of that truth while the entire world of death dies and she finally here is able to die and so being carried by that vision where she she's now pouring everything all her heart opens up and pours into that one single grain of true vision coming from the true spirit which has been able to penetrate this realm and come to her as the true genuine spirit that tiny grain of vision now encapsulates all of her and is able like a like a to carry her in that vision in that new ba born baby in a way she's ba being carried out of her own entrapment out of her own womb paradoxically and into the real world so she can only birth herself by this con con this new conception this baby this new vision coming from the true spirit, reaching her in hell, she recognizing the true spirit, pouring all of her power that she has been kept intact and saved for him, for this true vision, pouring everything in that vision and killing everything, taking all of her power out of all these nonsensical nightmares, killing herself basically from all these nonsensical 
world, words of hell, killing everything and putting all of herself in that one single vision which acts like a vessel that now then is birthed instantly like the child carrying the mother out of her own womb in a way, carrying her out of hell, carrying her out of this eternal coma that she was in and into the realm of heaven where she emerges. She emerges. She is the pearl. She is the pearl that in the Gnostic hymn of the pearl, the hero went to Egypt to get the pearl which was hidden and kept by the dragon, the snake, which was residing in the ocean. The ocean is the symbol for this power, this virgin power, this water, and this ocean is guarded by the dragon, which is, of course, the devil, this impersonating spirit, imposter spirit, impure spirit. And the hero, which is a king for the true spirit, goes down to the depths of Egypt, which was this impure place, to get the pearl, which is her, which is this, this new vision, this child. The, the hero cannot save the entire ocean, but it can only take with him the pearl from the ocean, which is this this tiny bit of the most precious quintessential aspect of the entire ocean it's this pearl which is found within that you know i don't know the name but the shell you know that shell and he takes the pearl and he comes back to heaven with the pearl and the hymn it ends where The hero takes the pearl, meets with the father in heaven and the mother in heaven once again. And the father said, says to the hero, you will now come to me, to the, let's say, God of gods or something like this. I don't remember exactly. And you will give and you will show to him your pearl. That's, that's the ultimate the ultimate, let's say, purpose of this entire thing, the God of Gods receiving the hero and the pearl. So, this is what happens to all of us. All feminine beings, by the way, they are cursed with this curse, but they have no idea what's happening to them. They are, they are, have been living since eons of time, constantly hurting themselves, constantly being the prostitute of the devil, without even knowing what ha what's happening to them, constantly waiting for the true spirit to reach them, constantly being masturbated by the devil, which comes to them, to the true feminine, the devil impersonating spirit, day by day, and thus she opens up her heart a bit, and this is how the devil reach, manages to stimulate her like a masturbation, you know, like artificially stimulating her heart, and thus driving more of this essence out of her each day. And then she sees all the abomination of children that are created with her essence and she blames herself even more, thinking of herself even to be worse than she thought before. And thus she accepts even worse things to happen to her from the devil and it's just spiraling in never-ending insanity and torture day by day.
and you think that this world that we are in is your your good and evil reality you think this is a duality where you came here to learn something well i'm telling you if you think that with all my free of judgment heart i can tell you you're the devil you're either possessed by the devil if you think that you might be honest in your heart but you might be possessed by the devil you might not really understand what you're thinking or you are the devil and this just happens to be that because this world is far from being a school <laughs> to say that it's an abomination which makes me vomit really it creates the without even wanting it creates the internal sensation here in my from my throat from from my throat to my chest area here it's just just vomit just an impossible sensation of vomiting when only when i hear that idea and I had this sensation, I think, even before I understood all these things. It's just something in me knows the truth, and in all of us it knows the truth. But our mind cannot explain yet what we, what we know. So to think that this world is a school, it's an abomination. It's actually a... It's an act against life it's an act against humanity you know in a, against the true humanity against the true life which is her this feminine being which has been captured here in this death realm this is far from being a school far from this is a test in a way if anything we could call it like a spiritual exercise in which there are, let's say, her faith in what's true has been tested. Her love has been tested. The love of the true masculine is tested again. It's, it's a sort of like, if anything, I could view it right now just as a sort of like spiritual gym of sorts where some skills are being exercised, but a school... It, it, I could throw up with an impossible vomit that can never even be sustained by this body only by thinking about that idea. This is a world of torture. There is nothing to learn from torture. Nothing. To think that the all-knowing spirit and the all-powerful soul which is the original soul the true feminine and the true masculine have anything to learn from the devil is just like a how you the only thing which you can do with this idea is to vomit it out there's nothing more you can do with it it's just to entertain it for even one split of a second it's just again to allow yourself to be tainted by an impurity To think that the devil has anything to teach to spirit is like... <sighs> so this is what happens to all the feminine beings in this reality without them even knowing. They constantly wait to be delivered. They constantly wait in a way for their own death. They want to die without even realizing. They want to be released. They just want to have the true spirit coming to them so that they can finally pour their entire heart into that, the hands of that true masculine being, that true spirit, so that they can finally, finally be able to give that last breath. It's like, and die. All feminine beings at their core, they just want to be left, given the chance to truly die. That's what they need. They just want to die.
and they constantly day by day they wait and they constantly day by day they think oh this impersonating spirit might be my true lover and then they go and they, they pour their hearts, a bit of their hearts, and then they see the abominations that is created with their heart. And again, they are fooled. Again, they despise themselves. Again, they hate themselves. And it just has been the never-ending story, man. So all feminine beings are hopeless, in a way. And I'm referring, of course, to the hairs, to the true souls which come from the true feminine beings i'm because the devil impersonates <laughs> the devil has been impersonating the feminine as well don't think that they are there, there are so many demons impersonating them being the feminine you know and then they go in the world and they they do all these nonsensical evil things in like impersonating female bodies and then just making creating this impression upon the world that the feminine is something, you know, chaotic and impure and evil and just because they are impersonating the feminine. It's the demons that do this. Trying to convince the world or the masculine to never trust the feminine again. And This is how the mass, mass majority of masculine beings in this reality, they hate the feminine. They just hate the feminine. Hate has been implanted in them. They are workers of the devil, man, with zero judgment. Some of them, they might not want to do this, but they are just used by the devil as servants to hate the feminine. And because they hate the feminine, they continue to create this because the masculine has the vision. It, he, he has the power of vision. If they hate the feminine, then... They come with this vision of hate to her and meet her with this vision of hate. And because, again, she's neutral, she has to manifest those visions, man. And it's never ending. I'm telling you, it's never ending. If you hate the feminine, you're just perpetuating the cycle of hate. Because she won't be able to stand against you. If you hate her, she will hate herself. As simple as that. She won't be able to say no to you, to your hate. She will never be able to refuse your hate towards her. She will hate herself and she will create these abominations of hateful realities. This is what it is at stake. This is why I'm saying that no true mass, no one single man can save the feminine. And all men have to come together because all men, exactly as it is in their nature, they have to unite in brotherhood to save the feminine. There is only one single feminine which has been trapped in this reality and she needs all of men to come together as brothers to save her. And this is why this world has been promoting and breeding, you know, the masculine competition. Oh no, it's like only one... Wait. legs oh. um, what this world has done again another trick of the same devil pure evil is to make the masculine beings fight with one another it's like only one of us can survive only one of us gets the princess only, only one sperm you know gets to penetrate and uh, implant you know the seed in Conquer the egg, you know, it's like, yeah, fight against you, each other, man. Yeah, go to war and fight against each other and kill you one another. Yeah, sure, that would help the feminine, you know. That would surely help her if you hate yourself amongst you. This is what the devil has created. It has created division between the mind of men and because... The mind of men is so important in all this equation because the mind of men comes from spirit and they are the holders of the vision. If the devil is able to split the vision 
and divide men, they divide the vision of spirit and that vision remains divided and no true vision can reach the feminine in its entirety. And so she can never recognize him in entirety. And so she can never give herself entirety to him. So all men, in a way, only carry a piece of the vision of spirit. This is why all men have to come together as brothers. And stop the division, stop the competition, stop the war between men. Only one of us can survive, you know. No, all men have to be together, come together as brothers. If it is ever be able, it is ever gonna be possible to save the feminine. All men have to come together. And I believe this might be actually what happens in the womb when a child is created. All those sperms are needed to create a child, not only one. It's all of those sperms which are needed, millions of them which are needed to create the child. All of them, not even one missing can create a child without even one missing. This is one you ha where you have only one single egg and millions of sperms. You have to have all those millions of sperms coming to her, plunging towards her to, to create the child, which is the pearl, which is then the vision of the true spirit being manifested outwards in the reality of heaven and thus she wakes up through her birth. She gave, giving birth, giving birth to this true vision. She gives birth to herself in heaven again. And she cannot do this without all the sperms, all the men coming together. So the men continuing to fight between them to conquer and battle between them, to kill one another. It's just the same play out of the devil, keeping them divided and thus keeping her perpetually entrapped, perpetually without hope that she could have and get the full, original, entire picture and vision, the original, entire vision of the true spirit. So this is why Kiron last, in my opinion, without perhaps even realizing all of this, has intuitively or somehow figured out that what we are up against by all rights should be impossible to achieve. The division, the cunningness, the malice, the evil that we are all entrenched in, it's beyond comprehension what we face, both men and women. It's beyond comprehension, this spiritual test, you know, this spiritual exercise, let's say, that we all face. It's beyond. This is why, as I said, in my opinion, Kiron has mentioned that You have to believe in the impossible. With all your heart, you have to believe the impossible is possible. With one's whole heart, one must believe in the impossible. It's only through this absolute belief in love, basically. Because I'm telling you, this is the ultimate thing, which is has the potential <sighs> to conclude, in a way, 
the purpose of this entire spiritual exercise is just love. Love is this impossibility. Love can make even this impossibility happen. But love requires everything from us. If we devote ourselves to love, I believe we are able to do this, but we have to devote ourselves entirely. And that is going to require everything from us. Love is going is requiring everything from us. All our strength, all our purity, the entire purity, the entire wisdom, the entire strength, the entire dedication, the entire courage. These are absolutes. To, let's say, win this game, you have to be the absolute version of yourself. You have to give everything thing of yourself this is why again Kiron has spoke about being all in <laughs> it's almost uncomprehensible how the truth has been right there given and but I'm telling you I believe that 99.99999 of individuals who heard Kiron last's work even understood what that was about I actually wonder if Kiron itself understood what that was about. Because to me, these pieces of the puzzle, they just unfold more and more each day. So I, I myself didn't understood what I was hearing when I was first hearing Kiron mentioning some of these things in his materials and messages. But it's exactly like that. To truly, let's say, win at this game, conclude the purpose of this exercise, nothing short than all in is gonna do it. Nothing short, it's just absolutes. We have to become the absolute version of ourselves. And to conclude on this, no man can ever truly save the feminine all men have to come together all human souls have to come together like brothers and sisters it's only us together that we can truly win quote unquote this game conclude the purpose of this exercise we have to come together. Exactly again as Kiron has mentioned, together to get her. <laughs>